Okay, problem 15 is another one of the ones with multiple parts. And we have this uh, sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus e to the n over pi to the n minus 1. And we have a couple of different statements about it. So it's just called a sub n for the rest of these here. So the first one is that it is a sum of geometric series. So we need to see if this is true or false. Well, what you can do here is since we have a single term in the denominator, you can split these up. So we could have this as 1 over pi to the n minus 1 plus e to the n over pi to the n minus 1. And we could make get those into their uh, geometric forms in the following way. We could just consider this one to be 1 over pi to the n minus 1. That's clearly a geometric form. This one is e to the n, so we'd have to take out 1e. But after that, it could be e over pi to the n minus 1. Remember, you need to have the powers equal to, to do that with it. So this is a geometric series. This is a geometric series. So this is a sum of geometric series. That is true. OK, statement two. This series is convergent. Well, that is easy to test once we've split it up in this fashion, because geometric series are really easy to tell whether they're convergent or divergent. So for a geometric series to be convergent, remember the only condition is that the fraction has to be within negative 1 to 1. So let's see if it is. 1 over pi, definitely that's 1 over 3.14, etc. That's clearly less than 1. e over pi, this just requires that you know the approximate decimals of these numbers. e is about 2.7, pi is about 3.14. So Again, this fraction is smaller than 1. So both of these geometric series are convergent, and if you have two convergent series and you take their sum, that is always convergent. <clears throat> so number 2 is true. And number 3, if it is convergent, which we already just said it is, the sum of a sub n is greater than 1. Well, that is pretty simple to test, so we can just try that with a couple of things. However, one way you can automatically test that without even really doing any work is that you're adding up a bunch of numbers. In this case, they're all positive, so you don't even have to worry about alternating. The first term of each, when n equals 1, you get to the 0 power. That's 1, and in this case, it's even higher. It's e. But then after that, you're just adding more positive numbers to it. Now they are getting smaller, but if you started at 1 and you're adding more positive numbers, clearly the sum is greater than 1. So that's true too. So all three of these are true, which is answer choice C. 